an article came out in The Independent, a UK uh, publication that I've referenced before about how the CIA used modern art as a weapon um, during the Cold War. This was written by Francis Stoner Saunders and it came out, um, came out a while ago. Um, but it's relevant because as we see the corporate state take over or has completely taken over just about all every aspects of media and you're seeing how like I talked about the Syria attacks only a handful of independent media people myself Jimmy Dore and a couple others were covering it while the mainstream media was was glorifying it so what this article goes into and the link is below is how in the, right after, shortly after the CIA was formed in 1947 they needed to um, they needed a weapon against the Soviet Union basically to show that it was a, a cultural war of, of showing how our way is better and the art of the Soviet Union was state sanctioned and state sponsored and the Soviet Union would always say we pay our artists while you guys let your artists suffer so they came up with they recruit a lot of people like uh, um, artists such as Jackson Pollock, Robert Motherwell, William D. Kooning, and Mark Rothko as a weapon in the Cold War. Um, in the manner of a, resist, a Renaissance prince, except that it acted secretly, the CIA fostered and promoted American abstract expressionist painting around the world for more than 20 years. Part of it, though, and what this article does not go into, is something that I have learn from reading, I've mentioned this book a lot, I know, The uh, Death of the Liberal Class, written by Chris Hedges, which many of you have read. If you have not, please read it. One of the things that Hedges goes into was something I was not aware of, of how the corporate state co-opted artists to push their narrative. And he talks a lot about theater and artists. He I mean, in that book, he talks about how, you know, Jackson Pollock did a lot of very political work prior to his, uh, the giant mural, the, the, the blot, you know, with the, you know, I forget what it's called, but that style that made Pollock big in the fifties, it wasn't political. And abstract art, as Hedges contends, was used to um, kind of push out all of the social commentary. Because as I've talked about, the theater in like the twenties and thirties was, a lot of socialist theaters because as you know the industrial revolution was making starting to create the corporations and corporate america and the corporate world and the workers were getting exploited um artists were doing work for the common man for working class people and part of what the cia also did and so many artists were very left-leaning and they were very anti-war, anti-government, anti-corporation. So the CIA comes in with a big checkbook and then what they did in this article, it's a very lengthy article, I suggest you go into it, but it, the CIA would set up a foundation. So it wasn't like the, a CIA guy would like write Jackson Pollock a check because he probably would have said, hell no. But they set up a fake foundation or they just get some sort of art patron to say, this is your foundation and all the money what actually was not coming for it. This is how a foundation works. So let's say I'm a, I'm a billionaire and I wanna just donate money to various causes. I set up a foundation and I take the profits from my business and I put it into my foundation. And you know, if I became a billionaire, I would still do this show and the money I made from political vigilante, I would put that into my foundation and then I would, be able to fund whatever. I could just write a check to a school or to an organization or to a person or somebody needs a house or a job. I could do that. That's how a foundation works. But you can also use foundations to sell plutonium to the Russians like the, like the Clintons done or just use your foundations to make business deals like Trump does. So they set up these foundations. So you see that. You, you'll see art. This art or this show was sponsored or this art exhibit was sponsored by the so-and-so foundation. That's usually what that means at some giant organization. So what these foundations were doing then was funding this, but also, and this is a, this is a, a form of censorship, is, and I know this as an artist, because 
I would love for this show to be my primary source of income. That's what I'm trying to build it up. That's what the Patreon's for. That's why it's been so outrageous that YouTube has demonetized it. But I've also hosted game shows. And, you know, I have a commercial agent and I need a gig, right? So if somebody came to me and said, Graham, we want you to keep doing political vigilante, but it's going to be on MSNBC and here's a bunch of money and we just want you to kind of cover these subjects. It becomes sort of subtle. So you're Jackson Pollock and you've done a lot of political work and then you just play around with this abstract thing and someone goes, oh, abstract, that's huge. I'm going to fund that. So they kept funding all these abstract art pieces. So then abstract art became amazing. It became the it became a movement. It was Jackson Pollock. It was part of the beat generation. And oh, it's so amazing. So they were using it against the Soviets to say, we have better art. We're more intellectually superior. And they were using it against the American people to say, check out, app, go to abstract art. We're going to make that more popular and more prevalent so that you don't watch or pay attention or care about or support art that really criticizes the CIA and the corporate state <laughs> and the war machine and the military industrial complex. You see how that worked? And Hedges talked about that. So then abstract art became only for wealthy liberal elitists. So the working person sees this and goes, I don't get it. And it's like, well, you're not smart enough. You're not. So it's another way the left has abandoned the working people when the left should be for the working people. It's another way they did it. It's so sinister and complex. The further I step back and see how they've been doing this at every single corner, it's unbelievable. And what YouTube's demonetization of independent progressive media calling out the corporate war machine is part of that. So if I do video, if I do cute cat videos or anything like that, I won't get demonetized. And I'd probably have millions of subscribers if I just came up here and did jokey joke stuff, did sketch comedy or whatever, which I, I've done for years. I'd make more money because they don't want me talking about this. They don't want me saying the real reason we're going to Syria is for pipelines. We're in a battle over who gets who gets the pipeline up. <laughs> they don't want me talking about that. So that's why. And if I get too popular, I don't know how what how they'll do, if this doesn't work. And like, you know, you're seeing Jimmy Dore and Secular Talk. Their Patreons are unbelievable. That they've basically filled in the gaps that that you know YouTube took away. So I don't know if they'll buy Patreon or if I get too powerful, if I got start uniting people, they want us divided, you know, and they want us doing abstract art that the CIA financed. You know, I'll go into a couple more details here, but um, they created in 1950, the International Organizations Division was set up by Tom Braden. Um, it was this office which subsidized animated versions of George Orwell's Animal Farm. I studied that in school. That was all showing how bad communism was. They financed that. So you're an artist, you're an animator, you're whatever, and someone says, here's some money to make this thing. Of course you're going to take it. You want to you want to pay your bills. And we have also demonized artists that talked politics. I got criticized about a week or so ago from a, another comedian. I was criticizing late night talk show hosts for being part of the corporate media. Seth Meyers has done some corporate stuff, but then he lets Marco Rubio on the show deny climate change and he gives him a free pass. He doesn't shell him for it. Um, and I was criticized by another comedian for, oh, leave politics out of comedy. Another comedian that I've known for a long time did this. This is a part of it. This is what the CIA, the CIA is, they must have, they must love that kind of stuff. You, and I've heard it a lot since the election. Oh, you should stick to comedy or stop talking all those politics. Your grandma, I love, I've heard that on social media. Like I'll do all these political posts and then I'll just put like a silly post and they'll be like, I like it more when you do this. I've heard people say that. Keep the politics out. We have been conditioned to not have the politics in there because of the deep state and starting with the CIA too. Well, before then. It started in, as I said, George Creel did it in 1915 to promote World War I, Wilson's, uh, President Wilson's war. 
So it's, it's amazing and how they go into the detail, how they did this and you'll go, wow. I like big museums, but they're designed for wealthy, snobby art patrons. There's some cool stuff in there. You see some cool exhibits, you know, there's some fantastic exhibits, but you also see all of this makes sense. And then when you, you read, you see this and then what Hedges wrote in Death of the Liberal Class, it all starts adding up. It all starts making sense. Everything I'm talking about is co connected. That beep means my laundry's done. So this video's over. Like the Patreon, donate to the Patreon. The more you guys support independent media, the more I can do stuff like this and shed a light on the fucking lies that they've been trying to feed all of us. And that's so awesome that I'm waking up, you guys are waking up. Maybe some of you have been woken up longer than I have. Wake up your friends and family, get them to pay attention because this is how they're screwing us all over.